The first one is Tural Peggy from approximate SPH and instantiation from analysis by uh, Yan Chan and Yu Yu and uh, Jiang will make the presentation. Thanks for, for your introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jiang Zhang, and this is a joint work with Yu Yu from Shanghai Jiangong University. So, we are considering the, the scenario where there are two parties over the internet, and they want to use, establish a session key by using their own password. Then, the first choose some mutual anonymous RA and RB, and exchange some public information over the internet. Finally, they will take all their private and in public information to a key derivation function to generate the session key. We have two basic goals. If both parties have the same public key, then the session key is computed by the two parties uh, have to be equal. And for security, we, we look for the cause that the other parties load the session keys computed by the, 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 the exact two parties. Because there are many, many key exchange protocols based on high entropy symmetrical keys, such as the key of the ADS, and one may wonder if we can simply use the password as a, as a symmetrical key to obtain a secure JP protocols by by in those protocols. Unfortunately, as shown in the literature, it is insecure to do so. And we actually need a different approaches with careful security argument, arguments when designing PAP protocols. And in 1992, Bill Wen and Merritt first uh, considered the only password setting and uh, proposed the well known EKE protocols. Uh, there are also papers that consider the security model and the concrete protocols in the hybrid case where the server one, one of the two parties holding a public key. The formal security model for PKE was proposed by Blair and Bo Boeco at all in 2000 year. In 2000, and three years later, Cassandra proposed the first PKE protocol in standard model. And were very efficient, and which was then abstracted out by Geneva and Mindel to a PAP framework, three round PAP framework from smooth project patching functions. And in the last decades, many papers followed this approach to deconstruct PAP with better efficiency or stronger functionality. But most of them are based on classic assumptions, and which are believed to be insecure. As as quantum computers are available. And in Asia Group 2009, Katya McTanison proposed the first PAP protocol from analysis, which by introducing, by introducing approximate SPH and by adapting the GL framework, we will talk about later. And in this talk, we will give a two round PAP framework by using ASPH and an efficient instantiation from analysis. So we begin with the definition of a public key. Uh, a PKE screen has three algorithms, key generation, encryption, and decryption. One can use the key generation to generate a pair of public key and secret key. And using the public key, we can produce a subtext of any given messages. The decryption algorithm can be used to recover the message from the subtext. Now, no. uh, then the practice of the PKE loop requires that the decryption algorithm always works correctly and will cover the messages from the subtext. Yes, given a key pair, PK and a separate key, we can define the space of valid subtext, which are all the possible outputs of the encryption algorithm, and then we define three set X, L, and L bar, where X contains all the subtext message pairs, and the L is a subset which satisfies the encryption relation. The last one is actually the, those subtext message powers satisfying the decryption relation. If a PKE scheme is perfectly correct, then any subtext can be corrected decrypted. So we have, have this relation, L is a subset of L bar, which is then a subset of X. Now, a PKE uh, uh, smooth project function over X is actually a key hash function with projective hash function alpha from the key space and the subject space to a uh, projection key. And given a hashing key, one can map any elements in X to a hash value. 
Moreover, if we the input is also satisfies the encryption relation, then we can compute the by using the randomness, corresponding randomness for producing the step X and the projection key S equals alpha KC. We have this this properties for any subtext message pairs satisfying the encryption relation, then the hash values computed by the two different ways must be equal. Second, for those that does not satisfy the encryption relation, we have the hashing, hash values computed by using the hashing key is uniform in random, even given the, given the projection key alpha kc. Now we first recall the jail framework from SPH. Here we have two parties sharing the same password and we have a common reference string which is a public key. In order to establish a session key, at least first generate a pair of public verification key and a secret key for one-time signature. And then he will send the verification key weekly and an encryption C1 of its own of his her own password and send it to Bob. Bob will choose a hashing key and compute the projection key S1 and send the S1 and an encryption of the, its, her, his own password to Alice. Alice will do the same, choose another hashing key, compute the projection key and send the projection key S2 as well as the signature. Notice that we have send a verification key in the first message, so we can create a signature in the third message on all the transcripts of the protocol. After doing this, Alice can set his her session key as the XOR of the hash values with respect to the two hash keys chosen by the two parties. Um, we Actually, Alice can do this, yes. Because he loads one of the hashing key, and he also loads the randomness for one of the subtracts and uh, <coughs> and the projection key from the other party. Um, Bob on the Bob's side, he will first check the value of the subtracts and set the session key as XOR of the hash values um, by the correctness of the signature and the SPH. We know that the session key is computed by the two parties uh, should be equal. And uh, the security of the protocol is actually counted by the signature, uh, the unfortunability of the signature, this is the security of the encryption, and the smoothness of the SPH. Utility actually, if the adversary does not hold the, hold the correct password, then the, all the inputs he uses to compute the hash functions will not satisfy the encryption relation because he actually, because he actually does not know the corresponding messages, yes. So by the smoothness of the SPH, we, we have the session keys computed by the two parties actually uniform running. So if we have a SPH analysis, we actually have a large space like PAKE, yes. Unfortunately, it is still an open problem to instantiate the SPH from analysis in, to, in order to bypass this and uh, to Kaiser and Vipers actually relaxed the definition of SPH to approximate SPH in the sense that where the, the correctness hold, hold, holds in the sense that the hash values can be by the two parties for two different ways, are no longer equal, but they only have little differences when parsed as big strings. This is the first property. Second, we look out the smoothness called for those those inputs does not satisfy the decryption relation. By doing this, actually, Kaiser and Webhans actually managed to give a large space PAPE from Docker by first give a three round PAPE framework <coughs> from ASPH. As you can see, the first two messages of, of their skin is actually the same as the jail framework. Now the, hash, the x XOR of the hash values are no longer equal by the two parties actually because we only have approximate of correctness. However, we know that the hash values computed by the two parties have, have little differences. This feature allows us to use the error correcting, error correcting code to send a random to the session key. Specifically, I just can first choose a random session key SK and use the hash values as a one-time key 
to encrypt the unencode of the SK. After doing this, Bob actually can first compute the XOR hash values, which is approximately equal to TK. And the error code allows us to remove the difference between the two values. Yes. For security, we, because the, the, the data part is actually a one-time part, part which can be easily modified to another data plan which corresponds to the same session key. Yes. So we, we must include it into the signature to protect the integrity. A practice of the scheme by the practice of the signature, error credit code, and the approximate made practice. And the security is, on, is almost as before. So, this, this program allows Catalan Web Dyson to obtain uh, uh, the first PAP protocol from Axis. So, I wonder if we can obtain a more efficient or too long PAP from Axis. And uh, actually, this seems hard to do so by using the techniques in, by. Uh, of Kazakh and of Tyson, there are two main reasons. First, we can only compute the one-time party key after one of the two parties have all the materials to compute the hash function. Yes, for two round PAP protocols, it, it means that we must fetch the message exchange in a single message, in the first message, which is actually impossible. Impossible for the current definition of ASTH because, because the hashing key also depends on the samples sent from the other party. So we can only do this after a second message exchange. Second, the technique of user signature to protect the one-time pad part data is seems to be useless for too long PAP protocol because if you send the verification key and the signature in a single message, the adversary can easily replace them at the same time. We solve this problem by introducing a splitable PKE and uh, enhance the underlying ASPH. In the following, in forming a, a splitable PKE says that the subplex of the encryption action can be split into two parts and can be independently computed by using two polynomial functions, F and G, where F is designed for realizing the functionality of the encryption and fix uh, Message and the second one part in the G is designed for providing the long malleability of the CC security, which is is lesser. And then we enhance the approximate ASPH in the sense where we require the hashing key only depends on the, or the projection key only depends on the hashing key. That depends on the subplex. Then the hash values. Because we require the first part of the subplex to already fix the, fix the message, so we can require the hash values can be computed without using the second part subplex. And for smoothness, we require the smoothness even hold when the input subplex message pairs does not satisfy the decryption relation and do dependent, may dependent on the projection key, which is not required in progress definition because in, in there, the projection key can only be computed by after the subplex is fixed. But for our case, this is we our, hashing key, our projection key does not depend on the subplex, so this is a stronger smoothness. Here comes our tool on the PRP for work. Our CRS is a still public key, and for uh, generation of uh, session key, at its first chosen a hashing key, computes its project key, and it's encrypt its password. Here, password send the suffix to Bob. Bob will first choose a hashing key, computes the projection key, and compute the first part, first part of the subplex, subplex of his password. After doing this, uh, Bob can already compute the hash values because our hash value only depends on the first part. Then use it to encrypt the algorithm chosen session key to obtain a data part. Finally, Bob will use all the information as in particular the data part as input to generate the subplex second subplex part, V2, and send S2, C2, and data to Alice. 
actually, this is we actually well, our basic idea is to use the long liability of CCA security to protect the data path because it is also used to change the subtext. And uh, Alice can compute the hash values and decode the randomization key. And the, the practice is guaranteed by the ECC and the ASPH. And the security is implied by the split both CC security of, e, of PKE and the long adaptive as well as the stronger smoothness of ASPH. So, this uh, is our tool on the PKE pro for work. Actually, uh, several PKE with SDH uh, naturally satisfy our definition and it can be used to instantiate uh, our tool on the protocol. Uh, we'll now show how to efficiently instantiate uh, from Nexus. Here is the LWE, which is the tuple. The first one is the random one, and the second one is the noisy inner product. And uh, the literature shows that the LWE problem is hard under some have lots problems. And however, if we use a chapter generation algorithm to generate the first part with the chapter, then we can use the chapter to solve the LW instance. This is some basic facts. Here, we actually build upon our ASPH with from the Z1 by Kite and Van Pennison with two more building blocks. First, we observe that the Larian from CPI to CCS transform actually naturally satisfies the split property, where we can define the F part as the PKE part, and the G part as the long interactive zerology. Second, we show a stronger smoothness lemma, which informally says that for all metrics B, and for randomly chosen error from the Gaussian distribution, given BE and uh, for any unbounded function. For any unbounded function H, we compute Z equals HBE such that AZ is far from the large cases generated by BE for any non-integer, non-zero integer A. Then the inner product of the Z and the E is still uniform, which, which is very strong. By using this, here comes our counter construction, which is actually very simple. It consists of two LW encryptions, as well as uh, an IZK, to pro prove that they are generated as they, for the same message, W. Actually, the, the red one is the F part, and the blue one is the G part. The decryption first verifies the, the proof, and the deep Solve the LW instance to recover the messages. This is the PKE and the ASPH of our protocol. The hash key is simply chosen from the discrete Gaussian, and the projection key is the inner product of matrix B and XI. Where B is from the part of the public key, and to compute the hash key, we first compute the ZI as this formula, where C is the where C is the subtext and W is our message. After this, we determine each output bit of the hash functions by comparing the AI with zero. This, to giving a hash projection key alpha k, we directly compute the AI prime, the blue one as the inner product of the projection key and the randomness of the subtext as zero. Then we determine the output of the hash function by the same as before by comparing the i with zero. For practice, we enter for any only generated syntax, we always can write say zero as this equation. This means that if we subtract this part, we we will give give this one. Uh, this means that zi and zi prime is equal up to some small errors. Yes. This uh, allows us to show the approximate correctness of our, our ASPH. And for smoothness, because the output, each output bit of the hash function is actually determined by the zi, which is sufficient to show zi is uniform. Yes. Actually. 
For any separate message pair, we can show that AY divided by this formula is far from the lattice generated by B for any non zero integer A. By our stronger adaptive smoothly lemma, this actually shows that we compute the as this way is actually uniform random. This achieves our smoothness. So, here is the summary. We give a two large JPE framework and an installation, efficient installation flow analysis. And the last comment actually, NIZP is, is relatively inefficient and is a lot of analysis that we use. To instantiate our KPE, we actually used the, the landmark one proposed by Hua in PPC, I, I think, to, to instantiate, which saves all, about a log n factor compared to previous skins. Thank you. Thank you so for the talk. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions. Do we have any? So if there's no question, I have one, one question. Um, so you have uh, the other uh, construction for 2 log KT uh, from ASPH, right? Yes. And your instantiation uh, from that is seem to rely on a random oracle model. Yes. Yes, so uh, could you tell something about the difficulty of um, realizing it from lattices uh, without random oracle? Without random oracle yes. model? Yes. Actually, currently, it is still an open problem to to construct an NIZK from lattice, we, we actually try to try to do it uh, almost several years to, to solve this problem. Uh, and as many many people in this, in this area actually try to solve the problem. So, um, however, for long NIZK, we know generally is that if we, we have we enhanced chapter permutation, then we have an NIZK, but uh, we still do not know how to find a enhance the permutation from next directly from next assumptions. Yes. But if you use the general assumptions we have one. Okay. Any other questions or comment? If there's no then uh, let's thank the slow game. Thank you.